Week 5 underway in 2019. It is a very short kickoff. Case fumbles at their own 32-yard line. They may have gotten it back. We'll see. Still waiting for an official signal. Hard to tell right at first. There we go. Spartans come away with it. Dominic uh, Berendika fumbled the kick but fell on top of it. So the Spartans will have it first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Look at the offense for Case as quarterback Drew Saxton comes out. He likes to spread everybody out. Wide receivers you'll see a lot today. Mario Robina, of course, Colt Morgan. Michael Wojcikowski has played well. He's just a freshman, but like what he's done in 2019. This is a handoff left side taken for a reasonable gain. Early action for Zach Hall. Moving bodies, you can see the offensive line had already reestablished the line of scrimmage two, three yards downfield before Hall was even close to being touched. Fans are settling in, enjoying things as the sun sets right at kickoff tonight. Hall, six career rushing touchdowns in 18 games, but he is far and away the rushing leader on this team throughout his career. Hall, with his number called once more, tries to get to the edge. Spartan offensive line from left to right. Derek Klontz, a senior left tackle. Thomas Strayer is a senior left guard. Brennan Ryan, the junior center. Anthony Polizzi, right guard. D. Ghosts is the right tackle this evening. Titan defensive starters coming shortly. Paul Gonzalez, their middle linebacker, is an animal on the defensive side of the ball. Running back here for Case is Brett Carney. Saxton feeling some pressure, throws across his body for a first down. Colt Morgan making his first appearance, and you can, you'll be able to tell pretty early on, him and Saxton have a really, really good relationship, and quarterbacks are really going to go to old reliable there on third down, as he did there with Morgan. Morgan at 6'5", 215, and earlier in his career, you kind of got the vibe he was more of a let's throw it up and see if he can win a jump ball, but Colt has worked so hard on running routes He's become a very reliable, effective wide receiver and not just a one-trick pony. Saxton fakes the handoff, wants to go to the right side. Carney in space. Tackled at the 28. Not bad for a converted linebacker, huh? <laughs> so Carney making the switch over to the offensive side of the ball this year. Big body, really good athlete, and Coach Debs doing what he does best, getting, it, getting the ball in his best athlete's hands. First down on a big... 33-yard play. Spartans have it on the move. This time Sexton under center. Morgan wide in the left. He's got Robena in the slot. Sexton looking back near side. Still got three seconds on the play clock. They've got to get moving. Hard count. Off in time. This is Hall. Barreling his way inside the 25, gets an extra couple of yards. Looks like he may have been tackled there by Drew Manning, the defensive tackle. Again, the offensive line, they're really being physical early on, setting the tone, moving the defensive line back. Tyree Reeder, Joey Lane, Brendan DeLuca, and Frank Antuono starting defensive line for Case. Nice play coming up that far side. Linebacker, or I should say uh, strong safety, Ian Barr up on the stop. Sometimes you'll see him play a little further back. He might play on the uh, on the strong side of the field as a linebacker sometimes. Occasionally you'll see a five defensive back look for head coach Scott Benzel's team. Another big third down coming. This is third and five. Ball's on the 23. All the lone tailback. Ocean Man is the tight end Zipko. Throwing back across his body, but not enough for the first down. Open field stop by Bryce Thomas. You see some of the athleticism there, and that's that's going to be the issue for the Case Western offense all night. Westminster can run, they're athletic, and that's not just the DBs or linebackers, all the way through to the D-line. Not a huge group on the D-line, but again, athleticism is kind of their calling card. Well, we're going to see Case early in this game try to assert some uh, some will on this Westminster defense. They're an effective spe uh, special teams group, but they don't like to kick a lot. 
Greg Debelak, a pretty offensive and aggressive coach. He goes for it on fourth down, back across his body. It's a catch for a first down. Good find over there, Ryan Coolidge on the reception. And that's a big league throw there by Saxton, going from the right hash mark all the way over pretty much to the numbers there on the left. Good grab by Coolidge, no doubt. All right, so it's been an effective and fairly lengthy opening drive of the game. Taken uh, into the fifth minute of this opening possession. There is Greg Debelak. Running it, throwing it, getting it done on both, uh, both accounts. Spartans are in the red zone. Saxton extends the handoff to Hall. Dances around a couple times and he is stopped by Joey Lane. Productive carry on first down. Coach Stavlak will take that every time. Anytime you can get three, four yards, even if it's just a simple run like that, that's really going to make life easy as you go into second and third down here. Get a good look there at Carney, who's lined up in the backfield this time in a pistol look with Hall standing to the left. Now Carney shifts. Saxton wants to throw it up for Morgan. Out of his reach. Coverage by Kevin Brown. I would be shocked if that's the only time we see that fade route tonight. Morgan <laughs> at six foot five, like we've mentioned, he's a matchup nightmare for anybody on the Westminster defense. So they will be going back to that, I can almost assure you. Well, talk about Scott Benzel. You see him in frame there. I mean, his his defensive backs, three of the four of them are underclassmen, and they list at 5'11", 5'7", 5'7", and 5'7". And he said, I feel like a broken record as I tell you about their character traits, but they seem to get more than what their size would allow them to get. Loves the way they play, but he recognizes you, you can't coach height. On third and six, Hall out of the backfield. He needs the seven-yard line, and he bulldozes his way ahead. First and goal for the Spartans. Hall by no means a... Uh you know, a huge person out there on the field in any way, but it's what's important here. He runs like it. He runs bigger than he than he's listed on the roster, and he runs behind his pads, as you saw there, carving out an extra two or three yards. So a gain of nine sets up first and goal. They officially mark it down at the three. Looks like we have the Wildcat formation here. Mason G. Montgomery, another one of those athletes that Coach Debs is just trying to get involved, make sure that they get a chance to touch the ball on offense. Saxton out of the game. Montgomery number one here is going to be running the show, looks like, for the next couple of plays. Well, Coach Debelak calls timeout. Play clock was about to expire. So, again, want to touch on, on Brett Carney, making the transition here to offense this year. And Coach Deb's offense, it's – sometimes overlooked, but they have that H-back position that Carney's been running at. In the past, people like Aaron Aguilar really, really own that position. And it's tough. It's difficult to, to be put in that spot. You need to block, catch, run, everything. It's And you get beat up in there. You're, you're running around with the linemen. But at the same time, like you've seen with Carney, he's out in the open field, expected to run wheel routes, taking carries, everything. Well, and think about it from this perspective, too. I mean, you've got a team that has an obvious target in Colt Morgan. But frankly, outside of him, there haven't been a whole lot of options that have really stepped forward, still looking for growth from that receiving core. So when you know you can rely on your backfield to, to get whatever you need, whether it's hard-fought yards, whether you're trying to run stretch plays, Carney's a big physical kid and can make a huge difference. Yeah, and as Coach Debs has said, they're young, inexperienced at the receiver position. That doesn't mean that they're not going to get better, though, and figure it out. 100%. Montgomery is out of the Wildcat here. First and goal from the three. He looks like he's going to throw it. Carney drops one off his shoe tops. Not quite that time. little trick, trick uh, idea. I'm not sure it's necessarily classified as a trick play, but trying to show off a different kind of look rather than just slamming one down the middle. Yeah, one thing you can do with the, with the defense as fast as Westminster is a little misdirection. They're going to overrun some stuff and kind of just get themselves out of position. So the play was there. Uh, maybe something Coach Debs puts in his back pocket for later. Well, they've brought Donald Day in the game at tailback. He's in the pistol with Carney in front of him, and, of course, Saxton back in the game as a quarterback. Day cut back. Can the pile push him in? Yes, they can. Touchdown, Spartans. 
Donald Day getting the Spartans on the board. Seems like every single game he's got at least one touchdown. Reliable. Keep the pile moving, keep the feet moving, and like we said, gets the Spartans on the board early to start. Well, it's his third score of the year in the very beginning of the fourth game, and he's got five career touchdowns now. If I had to guess, that's pretty much exactly how Coach Debs wanted that <laughs> opening drive to go. I think he liked that. Shoot up some clock, good mix of run and pass, and I think something to keep in mind going forward, offensive line is really moving people off the ball. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. Extra point up and good for Spartan kicker Robertson Albrecht. All right, off to a good start, and as you mentioned, I realize it's 7-0, but perhaps more impressively, 8.51 left in the first quarter. That was a lengthy scoring drive. Let's see if we can give you the drive details here. 13 plays, 67 yards, and it took nearly half of the first quarter. That is exactly how you draw it up. And if you're Westminster, okay. Offense has had plenty of chance to watch their defense. Now they want to go out and try to get something done on the other end of the field. Yeah, the Westminster offense getting ready to make their debut for the night. First in the PAC, averaging 49 and a half points. So scoreboard could be getting some work today. It's all going to come down to the Spartans' defense. How well can they contain this trio of running backs? Yeah, they are seventh in the country in terms of their scoring offense. There are a lot of teams that play Division III college football. Several hundred. Looking like they're going to angle this one to the left. Not that deep of a kick. Fielded at the 10-yard line. Bryce Hill up across the 30, and off he goes. All right, so here come the Titans, led by sophomore quarterback Cole Konechka. 5'9", 186 pounds, and a young man who has played a little bit in his freshman year, but this is a big opportunity for him now as a sophomore. It's Konechka's show to run, and they're looking for him to continue developing. He's from Coropolis, Pennsylvania, and while he may not have had the same level of hype around his recruitment that Drew Saxton did, he put up some pretty impressive numbers that caught the Titans' attention. Konechka on first and 10, slings it left side and a completed pass to Dwayne Brown. Patrick Crossy on the tackle there, I would get highly familiar with him tonight. He's going to be all over, kind of in the roving, the roving safety role. Bryce Hill, Keanu Grice, Tyler Green will all see time at running back tonight. And at the moment, Titans have Hill in the backfield. Move things around a bit, go under center. Hill's first carry of the night. He's got speed, beautiful shimmy. And he's down at the 37-yard line after he faked uh, Nick Kadlesic out of his shoes. And if you had to nail down one thing that's going to be the key for the Spartans' defense, it's going to be tackling. They need to be sound, need to be run into the ball, more than one guy there because this trio of running backs is tough. They're shifty, they're fast, they're going to run hard. Have to limit the, the yards after contact. Three upperclassmen who have run for almost 700, 900, and 500 yards, respectively. They've combined for 23 touchdowns over the course of their career. Third and short. How about the Spartan defense? Look who it is. Joshua Smith in the backfield. Great play. Starting in, I don't know. Westminster had no chance on that. Josh Smith is an elite athlete, especially coming from that linebacker position. Knife's right through the line. 34 had no chance there on that play. Yeah, they ran the ball with Frank Antuono, who's a defensive end. But they ran him out of a wildcat and decided to try and bang him off to the right-hand side and power their way ahead. Didn't work out as they hoped. John Seibach got absolutely crunched. And I have a feeling Westminster's going to keep the ball here, even though... The Spartans had forced a three and out. Cyback, the place kicker a year ago, now the punter for Westminster. Yeah, it looked like Josh Klopp there really got his money's, money's worth on the punter. In a tight game like this with two really technically sound teams, any one mistake like that can really be the difference. So we'll see if Westminster here can take that, capitalize it, and get some momentum going. Second life for the Titans. Here's their starting offensive line. 
Cameron Micah, Brady Hogue, Devin Little, Gabriel Cleveland, and Jake Rocco across the line left to right. Bryce Salick, sophomore tight end. Dwayne Brown, Connor Cox, Joey Joy, Antoine Jones, they'll all be in at receiver at some point. Konechka under center, turns and hands the ball to Hill, and he got hit right away in the backfield. Good tackle quickly there by Spartan linebacker Skylar Waitis. And one of the toughest things about preparing for Westminster is it's a very, very multidimensional offense. They're going to throw a bunch of formations at you, a lot of motion. I trust that Coach Miller's gotten his defense ready. Um, it's just a repetition thing throughout throughout the week in practice. you got to see all the looks, and if there is something you haven't seen before, just go out and play ball. That's kind of what it comes down to. And you just saw number 44, Cameron Brown, the near side defensive end. Quick screen over the middle. It was dropped. Jones had room to run had he hung on, but instead it's third down and 11. The one thing you'll notice with the Westminster offense, not a whole lot of size at the skill positions. Uh, at the tight end, you have Bryce Salick, six foot. Everybody else is under six foot. Again, kind of similar to the Westminster defensive backfield. Smaller. It's definitely going to bring athleticism and toughness, though, so you, they cannot be underestimated. Cam Brown, Andrew Lease, Adam Pultrak, the three-man front. Here they come after Konechka. Cole chucks it down the right side. He overshoots Jones. Not afraid to show off some arm strength there, but put too much behind it. Yeah, defense looking stout early. Again, Westminster given an extra opportunity with the penalty, but unable to capitalize. It's It might come down to just one or two stops here because both these high-powered offenses, at some point they're going to find the end zone and get on a roll. Almost feels like two three and outs. So more momentum for the Kate, uh, Case defense. Good news, John Syback is okay, and he is back there to punt it away again. Robina calling for a fair catch. Pulls it in around the nine-yard line. Great punt from Cyback flipping the field. It's a 41-yard kick, no return. 6.04 left in the opening quarter. Case looking good on both sides. They've cashed in offensively and came up with a good defensive first series. If you've just joined us, I'm Brendan Gulick with Andrew Rossman. And perhaps it's appropriate for Andrew Luffglass to get a mention here tonight. New dad. Hopefully he's watching back at home, but this is his chair, and I'm sure he'll be back here soon. But congratulations to him and his family on the birth of their first child. Saxton over the middle, and it just slipped through Colt Morgan's fingertips. Ball was thrown a bit behind him. Looks like that's probably third or fourth play that they've rolled Saxton out. I don't know if that was a, a known thing coming in for the game plan, but they've definitely been trying to get this Westminster defense on the move early. And, and to back that up, I don't think it's a condemnation of the pocket that can be created. I think they just respect that Westminster likes to move around. It's not necessarily that they have a great defensive line. They're more known for their secondary. But Case likes to make things confusing and use their creativity. Fake handoff on the end around. Instead, it's Day through the middle. They got tripped up and, frankly, almost stripped by Darius Dottie. All right, third down and five. Good carry there for Day as the Spartans hurry up here. Paul Gonzalez, number two, the middle linebacker there, calling out coverages. This one's thrown near side. It is not enough for a first down. Day caught it, but he is a solid yard short, I thought. Wow, they gave him a great spot. He had both feet short of the 20-yard line, and they put the ball on the 20 for a first down. Yeah, it's a big first down, if for nothing else, to you try and reestablish some field position. As we mentioned, solid solid special teams by Westminster backed them up, but Spartans are on the move again. Well, Case will take the lucky break. <laughs> I'm sure as a uh, former defensive back, those probably stuck in your craw a little bit. Yeah, we'll try and stay unbiased here, but <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. All right. Day through the middle. Nowhere to go. They get a lot of action early, and... Coach Debelak, he asks a lot out of his running backs. As you saw, he got the third down catch, and then he's getting the rock on the very next play there. So it's good to see him involved in the offense early, trying to get in a rhythm here. Ian Barr wears number four, and, of course, Paul Gonzalez, number two. Those two guys fly to the football. They are fun defensive players to watch. Second down and eight from the 22. Case has dominated 
this first quarter on an absolutely postcard perfect night. Finds him on an out route. Robain up. Yeah, Saxon's gotten himself into a nice little rhythm here. It seems like for the most part at this at this stage of the game, they've been keeping things short, more intermediate. Could be setting something up for Morgan coming down the road, but I mean, completions are completions. Anytime you can keep the sticks moving, that's that's going to benefit them. Hard to know for sure if all of those folks are Titans or Spartans fans because they've got the same colors. The Navy, Navy Bowl. and white. The Navy Bowl. <laughs> that's right, the Navy Bowl tonight. I like that. I like that. All right, third and four from the 26-yard line. Saxton cool and composed as usual. Wants to throw, needs to get rid of it quickly. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure he had a receiver that was terribly close to it. Colt Morgan was blocking up the field, but good pressure there that time, and Westminster forces a punt. Yeah, so they tried to run. Brett Carney from the H-back spot, H -back spot lined up on the left. They tried to sneak him out to the right, and it just got too jumbled. The defensive line, whether they intended to be or not, were too disruptive. They were in the middle of the line and just never got off the ground. Danny Dennison back deep to receive the punt here from Robertson Albrecht. Boy, don't talk about a line drive kick. No hang time at all on that. Albrecht was still able to grab it and pick up a few yards. Considering they didn't have a lot of time to get down the field, credit to the coverage team for making the stop quickly. Yeah, Gabe Dory uh, kind of picked up the slack there from his punter. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a solid punt, solid net average there. And we'll see if this case defense can bring the fire that they brought on the first series. All right, 327 left in the opening quarter. This is the game of uh, the game of the night. Probably not technically classified as the game of the week, but for all intents and purposes, I think just about everybody would agree the two undefeated teams playing for uh, at least momentary supremacy in the league. On first down, Hill. Boy, is he elusive! Yeah, I think we're going to see a heavy dose of Hill, at least here in the beginning. He's been. He's been positive yardage anytime he's touched it. And you can see, really, he's got the burst there. And that, that's his calling card. He's able to get the ball immediately at top speed and turn out six yards. Konechka sends three targets to the left here with Hill behind him. And his tight end on the right side there is Bryce Salick. Quick throw to the left, up and caught by Connor Cox. His first grab. Spartan defense swarms to him. Luke Bedell in on the tackle. And then Cam Brown got off his defensive end spot and made a stop as well. I got to give this Westminster uh, team credit. They seem to be drawing up the kinds of plays where Cam Brown doesn't have time to wreak havoc in the backfield. Yeah, you'll see that a lot. If you have, you know, whether it's concerns about your offensive line or you're just you know that there's a strong defensive you know, end on the other side, the easiest way to neutralize him, get rid of the ball. He's Total non-factor with that. Brown's had an unbelievable career. Through the middle. First carry of the evening for Tyler Green, and I think he's got enough for the first down. And they will move the sticks after third and one converted okay. How about this from Cam Brown? He's playing his 34th game tonight. 148 tackles, 47 for loss, and 28 sacks. He's also forced seven fumbles, recovered five, had an interception, and broken up eight passes. <laughs> All over the place, and you'll see it. He will pop up at some point tonight. Konechka fakes the handoff to Hill. He's got lots of time. Good coverage, though, and the pass was thrown well off target. Looks like he was trying to connect there with Dwayne Brown, who tapped his chest and said, hey, my bad, maybe he ran the wrong route. Yeah, just a it looked like it was a little off from the beginning. Just... A little miscommunication, something they got to iron out here as the night goes on. Hill checks out of the game. Here comes Keanu Grice for the first time. Again, Grice not a big guy either, 5'9", 185, but he's probably the more physical of the runners in the group. He can do a little bit of everything, though. Second down and 10. And it looks like a 
Substitution penalty coming. We're going to give the assist there to defensive coordinator Warren Miller. <laughs> jumping about as high as he possibly can to get the ref's attention. Yard penalty. Still second down. He was in it. <laughs> uh, it's like candid camera. He was in it. He was in the huddle. And that's there's what the, he says. There's the behind-the-scenes look <laughs> that we're all trying to get. Oh, that's great. Second down and 15. Again, our referee tonight, Jack Thorne. All right, it's a ball placed back at midfield. One first down on the drive so far. Cole Konechka, Western PA kid, looking down the field. Boy, was he about to get drilled when he threw the ball for a completion far side. That's a nice grab out there by Damon Mall, a, a secondary tight end. But how about credit for hanging in there in this pocket? Yeah, so Cam Brown really showing off. You know, you don't necessarily have to get hands on the quarterback to impact the play. He's long, athletic. He knows that if he's not going to be able to get there, he's going to get his arms up and just restrict those passing windows like he did there. Pass is completed, but still, if you ask the quarterback, it was not an easy throw. Third down and 11. Konechka feeling the pressure. The offensive line released perfectly. And Grice on the screen pass does exactly what the Titans hoped. Beautiful execution. First down, Westminster. It's one of the you know hallmarks of Warren Miller's defense is he is going to bring the heat. And more often than not, there's going to be at least one extra one linebacker coming, and they just got burned on that. So that's, as you mentioned, exactly what Westminster wanted out of that. They, you know, took a risk and paid off. Screen pass when you got two linebackers coming is generally going to work out for you. Joshua Smith in the game. He's got a chance to make an impact coming from his right outside linebacker spot. He gets in the backfield and wraps him up around the ankles. Look at that. Making you look good. <laughs> I'll take it. Good play by Joshua Smith. So another another Spartan that underwent a position change this year. First two years in the program was a safety. He's made the switch to outside linebacker, and he's really, really flourished. Second down and 12. They don't have to run a play here if they don't want. Only a few seconds left in this first quarter. And Konechka is content to flip sides of the field. All right, one quarter in the books, and the two unbeaten teams in the President's Athletic Conference have looked good. It's 7-0 Case Western Reserve. Took the opening drive of the game, 13 plays, 67 yards, and capped it off, getting in the end zone for the first score of the night. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Have you heard the news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Second quarter opens up with a second down and 12. Konechka over the middle, flag flying high near side. The pass is incomplete, but Connor Cox, his catch, if it had happened, might not have counted depending on the uh, foul here. We'll find out. Here's the call. You want that coach? An eligible man. Downfield against Westminster. Number 36 was covered up by the wideout. Penny will be declined. It'll be third down. All right. So Case declines the penalty. Spartans in the first quarter. 19 plays for 83 yards. Westminster has run 14 plays now for a total of 32 yards. 
Statistically, Drew Saxton looking good. 7 of 10 through the air, 58 yards. Of course, Brett Carney had the 27-yard catch and run on his short pass. Big third down play for the Spartan defense here. Westminster's been pretty good on third downs early, but that one's broken up. Diving effort and a beauty. Dion just starting to get pressure there. I, had, I almost think Cam Brown was probably held there. Warren Miller was yelling about something. I'm sure that's, yep, you can see it there. <laughs> and again, that's that's the effect that Cam Brown's going to have. If you are if you have any hope of stopping him, you're either going to have to double team him or hold him and hope that the refs don't see it like that. So I would say for the rest of the night, the other the other D linemen are going to have to step up because I, if you will notice, Cam Brown has been double. Looked like there's a couple triple teams even. I don't know if they intended for it, but. He's the beast. He's the one they're they're focused on. The other guys gotta gotta do their best. Well, check this out. Connor Cox is in punt formation. He's gonna throw a bomb down the left hand side. Good looking throw, but it's broken up. Even had he caught it, it may have been out of bounds. It's about as good as you can play it from a defensive perspective. Brian Victor out there. The old linebacker showing off the wheels, showing off the coverage skills, but that's in the that's in the portion of the field where, as a head coach, you're not going to be able to kick a field goal. Is yeah. it really worth what are you, gonna do? you know punting it down just for a, a ten yard difference? So calculated risk didn't work out, and you know not a whole lot of downside to it. Westminster tried to take a shot. Don't blame them for their decision. So case takes over first and ten. I like the nature of Scott Benzel's team, too. They they want to come out and try and punch you in the mouth. On the first down carry, Spartans look like they pick up three to the 36-yard line. Positive yards. That's one thing Coach Debs really preaches is positive yardage on first down. Kind of opens up the entire offense. Keep your eye on Aaron Pierce. He wears number eight. He is a safety for the Titan defense. He was a quarterback at a 5A school in Florida. And Coach Benzel said whatever it is in terms of intangibles, he has it in spades. He goes, he, he loves the fact that he's got a guy that is so athletic roaming the secondary like that. He likes to convert quarterbacks to defensive backs because they think the game. As Case calls a timeout. Timeout. Case Western, second shot. Out. Anyways, Aaron Pierce, the kind of guy that if you put the ball in the wrong spot, he is a ball hawking safety. And don't be confused with his 5'7 stature. He is certainly the kind of guy that can make a big difference. Case calls a timeout, their second. And they've got a 7 0 lead here over the Titans. Well, while we have a second, why don't we tell you about the other games that went on around the league today? St. Vincent. Had a rough time on their home field. Geneva walloped St. Vincent 48-10. A great game in Waynesburg. Waynesburg upended Teal. Just nipped him 14-13. Of course, next week, Case has to play Washington and Jefferson. So they've got back-to-back -back weeks here against two really good opponents. W&J will be riding high into Cleveland. 69-21. They throttled Bethany. But perhaps the surprise of the day, Grove City 29, Carnegie Mellon 28. That leaves, uh, that leaves Case in an interesting position knowing they'll play Carnegie Mellon final game of the regular season. That was a double overtime finish, by the way. All right, out of the timeout, Saxton back to work. Drew spinning into trouble and he is punished. Joey Lane behind the line for a sack. Yeah, receiver's just not able to get any separation there. Anytime the quarterback's well, – it looks like he's going to have to come out for a play as his helmet came off. But anytime the quarterback's going to have to run around there for three, four, five seconds, it's just – it's not going to work out. So kind of a coverage sack, if you will. But Westminster will take it. Puts the Spartans in third and 12 here. Well, their backup quarterback is Ryan Coolidge. Coolidge a senior. He knows what the offense is supposed to do. But on third and 12, this is a tough situation to have your quarterback have to come off the field. Tough break. Coolidge wants to keep it running a draw up the middle. He made a man miss, and he got a first down. 
Cool is another one of those athletes. You'll see him at receiver here sporadically throughout the day. And I mean, that's what you're looking for. When you run the draw play on third and long like that, that is picture perfect. Defensive line penetrates, gets upfield, quarterback slips underneath. Aaron Pierce, the one that got shook out of his shoes. That's the kind of play. You look back at the end of the game and think, boy, when, uh, when you have two good teams that are both going to make a lot of good plays, oftentimes the game only comes down to one or two deciding plays. That keeps this drive alive. Let's see what the Spartans do the rest of the way here. That's a huge lift. Saxton hands it off. Day trying to get to the right. I think his forward progress took him to the 49 for a four-yard pickup. Carney with a nice lead block there on the edge. And Saxon going under center. You won't see a ton of it out of the Spartans. Not a whole lot of under center. Primarily a, a shotgun team, but just a little wrinkle. Something else for Westminster to prepare for, adjust on. Donald Day scored a touchdown with 8.51 left in the first quarter. It's the only score of the game. It capped off a 13-play, six-minute drive, 67 yards on the opening scoring drive of the game. That guy was missing a good game. <laughs> Second and six. Fake handoff. Saxton wow. threw it right almost into the midst of Darius Doty. He's lucky it was deflected and not intercepted. That was a pretty good play by Doty, getting his hands up, affecting the quarterback's vision, and ultimately swatting it down. Again, Saxon rolling out as they've. So it's third and six. By the way, just a little teaser for you. Hope you'll stick around for our halftime coverage. We're going to visit with the commissioner of the President's Athletic Conference, Joe Anderko, in the building tonight. Looking forward to chatting with him about the state of the PAC. Just shy of midfield, Saxton on third and six. And flags fly, killing the play. I think they may have had two men in motion. Illegal motion against Case Western. There are two men in motion at the time. It'll be a five yard penalty, third down. It's the type of procedural error that'll drive a head coach nuts. Drive him nuts. And it also just kills your momentum. And if you're looking at that play, they had the flare pretty much drawn up to perfection. Zach Hall was going to have a one-on-one -on -one there with the DB, chance to, to pick up the first down. But all for nothing, got to reload and refocus here. It takes you from third and six to third and 11. So a much more challenging situation. A little pressure being shown as the defensive backs back off a bit here, although they are playing press coverage on the outside. Saxton looking that way, out of a sack originally, and then pulled down. Frank and 2-0, the junior defensive end, ripped him to the turf. Playing a little bully ball, driving the tackle right back into the backside of, of Saxton there and getting him down on the ground. So, I, I mean, that's the risk you run when you're in third and long. You're not banking on them running. You kind of pin your ears back. You hear that term a lot. And defensive line can just kind of shoot up field and really get after the quarterback. So, shows you the importance of the early downs that – you know, it really makes things difficult. I'll tell you what, for a team that hasn't been known for their defensive line play, you wouldn't know it watching tonight's game. Fourth and 20. Defensive line for the Titans tonight has stepped up in a pretty impressive way. Albrecht with the punt. It's a line drive, fair catch at the 41. Pierce hauls it in and says, okay, or I should say Dennison hauls it in and says, I'll take it from here. So, I have to see what Westminster does here. Puts a little pressure on the Spartan defense. Good field position for the Titans. And they'll come out here. Konechka standing in the shotgun. Westminster's only got three first downs in the game so far. One on the ground, one on the air, and one because of a penalty. Konechka trying to make something out of it. Ball's on the turf. How about the play there by Westminster to get back on the football? Chaos. Chaos ensuing. Brian Victor making another big play. He's having himself quite a night as we move through the, the second quarter. But 
I mean, it was doomed from the beginning. And that that's really the importance of getting the snap is football. It's so mechanical. You have all your routines and everything. As soon as you get off schedule with a bad snap like that, it's going to cause issues. There's Bryce Hill. Great play after having that fake handoff. Perhaps he heard somebody yelling fumble because you don't often take a fake handoff and then turn and look behind yeah. you. But he located the ball quickly and kept possession. It's an 11-yard loss. Konechka over the middle. He had time. Incomplete. Good hit on Dwayne Brown, the converted corner. He's been a, uh, a pleasant surprise this year for Westminster. Isaac Whitthrow at the pass breakup. The old man flashing the aggression. He's experienced. <laughs> He's senior leader in the middle of the defense, and that really makes the defensive coordinator's job easy when you have old reliable there that you can count on. Brown's played in a bunch of games, but not many at wide receiver. You want to talk about a play doomed from the beginning. Incomplete. Cole Konechka was counting the seconds before he would get crunched behind the line. I think the story of the night so far has been third and long. You see it with both teams. As soon as they get behind the chains, as soon as they get off schedule, it's just with the speed and athleticism of these defenses, when they can really kind of hone in on the quarterback and focus on the pass rush, it's, it's tough. It makes it really, really tough to convert some of these situations. Not that it wasn't at the time, but the opening touchdown of the game on that lengthy drive is looking more and more impressive. Another good punt. Booted away by Cyback, who was roughed early in the game and thankfully has not shown any uh, ill signs. Well, thanks for joining us here tonight again with Andrew Rossman and Brendan Gulick. It's been a fun night. Who on the field on the offensive side for Case has stood out most to you? The offensive line, I'm not going to pin it down. Just the one guy, I think, as a unit, they've really been playing well. They've been, like I mentioned earlier, reestablishing the line of scrimmage two, three yards downfield. That's heaven for a running back. If I'm not going to get touched until I've already gotten three yards, I can't ask for anything more. So offensive line's been really strong so far. Well, I'll tell you who hasn't had a chance to make too many plays tonight so far is Colt Morgan. One catch for six yards. He's been targeted a couple times. They want to throw deep down the right side, and a great catch. Check out Robina coming back for the ball. The Saxon Robina connection. So Mario's really, really strong in the slot. Great set of hands. And another guy, he's going to play above his size. You see him elevate there and able to pull down the big catch. Get the Spartans across, across midfield. First time since their opening drive. Freshman Kevin Brown got turned around there at cornerback. That's a big play. And Rubina has definitely established himself as the number two behind Colt Morgan. Colt's going to get the, the heavy dose, but Mario's been playing really, really well this year so far. Hall on the handoff, breaks a couple tackles, and is finally thrown down to the turf by Dominic Montalbano. Well, ideally, you want to try and average somewhere between four, four and a half yards on first down plays when coaches go back and look at that throughout the course of the year. Case has been pretty good on first downs tonight. Not great. That at a six-yard uh, six yard gain is certainly good. Hall is close to having another first down, tackled for a short gain. You know, a lot of people look at third downs because it's an easy stat. It's, it's very accessible. It's kept everywhere. But frankly, if you're not having productivity on first downs, doesn't matter if you're playing offense or defense. You have to have first down plays go your way to significantly put the odds in your favor. Yeah, the best third down play is being effective on second down. Like that. Saxton rolling out to his left. Eyes down the field, and he floats one out of bounds. Smart play from a young quarterback. It no foul for intentional grinding. Quarterback is out of the tackle box. Fourth down. Saxon also knows in the back of his mind that where they're at on the field, this is, again, kind of that sweet spot where it's not necessarily in your best interest to punt it. You can, I guess, when you're on third down, say we got two plays to get three yards here. Well, it's fourth and three. That's manageable. Donald Day in the game. Tight end is Adam Zipko. Day got the football. Does he have enough? I don't think so. It's going to be really close, but I think Westminster may have stopped him short. Yeah, it looked like he needed the 30, and he did not quite get there. So big stop for Westminster. 
and they got to get something going on offense here. Defense has stood up after that opening drive, and the offense is, you know, it's it's go time. It's only a 7-0 lead, especially with Case's offense. You don't want to get down two scores. So defense has done their part. It's time for the offense now to start moving some bodies. Hey, look, it's early in the game, right? But perhaps you're seeing now as both teams are playing against easily the best opponent they've seen all year, perhaps we're seeing that both offenses are plenty capable, but maybe some of the big stats they've put up are a result of them not necessarily being tested yet. Keanu Grice takes this handoff, stretch play to the left, and he is met quickly. Cameron Brown said, no, sir. And there's that man. Yeah, Westminster pulling two, two linemen to the left, but it looked like the backside kind of kind of got blown up. Cam Brown showing off his speed and athleticism, able to run down the running back from the backside. So it's second 11 here. Fun fact, the green shirt that Cameron Brown is wearing, he's worn every single game of his case career. Hope he washed it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't speak to that. Uh, hey, superstitious. You know, you got to do what you got to do. The funny thing is, it's an incredible Hulk shirt. That's, it's that's kind of what he tries to channel. just fine for him. Yep. Yeah, I like that. About a five-yard gain up to the 34. A quick little turnaround on the hook route from Connor Cox. Looks like the defense is subbing linebackers out a little more than I would have expected, but it's just with a potent offense like this, you got to have your pass rush be, be healthy, um, you know, fresh. So they're... Looks like Coach Miller's been rotating his linebackers tonight. Josh Smith coming in here for this third down. Fans getting behind the third and seven play upcoming. Konechka over the middle. It's a beautiful catch. A great tackle from behind. But a first down. Spartans brought the heat. Konechka able to stand in there, find pretty much his, you know, his go-to guy all season, Cox, 20, and... That's a big first down for them. At, at this point, Westminster, they need to be able to move the ball. They need to start building some confidence as they go against this, this so far stout Spartans defense. How about Joshua Smith trailing the play and going down to grab Cox before he could get out into the real meat of the open field? Keanu Grice switches and puts the ball in his left hand. And he has stood up just past the 50-yard line. Stymied on the play by Isaac Withrow. Well, we haven't really talked about it, but this defense is playing a little shorthanded tonight, too, for Case. Yeah, Kevin Chrisis, normal starter at the cornerback position, out with a shoulder injury. Not sure how long that's going to be. Hopefully it's just a little stinger, but Schuster's stepping in. Luke Bedell on the other side, veteran presence. Second down and eight. Konechka, another good find as the Spartan defense really dropped back deep. That time caught by Antoine Jones. Gonna look there at Brian Trail, who's giving us some great pictures here tonight. Appreciate Brian Bernhardt's work as well. Kevin Gibson handling some of our, uh, some of our replays. And of course, Mike Becker. We appreciate all of their work all football season long. Third down and one. Open playbook here, I would think, for the Westminster Titans. A little wildcat formation. See what they can do. Well, it doesn't help when you fumble the football, but that was a heck of a recovery. Frank Antuono, the defensive end, fumbled the snap, picked it up, and bulldozed his way ahead for 10. Yeah, it's weird. Sometimes you'll see it on kick returns or punt returns where the returner will fumble the ball. You think it's chaos, but it ends up actually being you know beneficial to him. It allows the blocks to just kind of set in, get a little farther downfield, and once he got a head of, head of steam going, he wasn't going to get chopped down real easy. Well, Bryce Hill's run it three times for 10 yards. Tyler Green, one time for one yard. Keanu Grice, three carries, minus one yards. It's not been an effective night running the football, and yet... They pick it up on the ground, first down. Grice, can he get to the outside? Yeah. Good run for Keanu Grice, easily his best. Pushed out by Travis Johnson. And there's, you see the issue with missing one tackle. There's one little slip up, and it goes from a, a loss of one to a gain of, well, it's first down. Or second, excuse me, second down. But, yeah, eight-yard gain just because of one missed tackle. So Spartans really got to focus on wrapping up, running to the ball, and getting tackle in here tonight. It was Luke Bedell. We've got stiff arm to the ground. Bedell's turning into a 
a ball hawker on the defensive side. He's done a great job as a nickel corner. Second and two, Konechka mishandled the snap, thought perhaps he was going to hand it off, and then he said, forget it, I'll take it myself. Yeah, a little surprised. They're having you know multiple issues with the snaps and the quarterback running back exchanges tonight. It hasn't, hasn't bit them too bad yet, but it's something they definitely need to iron out here. Well, Tyler Green is in the backfield at the moment. All right, a couple of options. Cox goes wide left, split out to the right. Dwayne Brown. First and ten. This is as good as Westminster's had it all night long in terms of their field position. Konechka hands it. Another good run. Tyler uh, Tyler Green getting forward and whatever uh, whatever this Titan offense has figured out, they figured it out on this drive and they keep stringing together positive rushing plays. Yeah, if you look, coming into the game, Westminster averaging 205 yards per game on the ground, second in the PAC, 43rd in the country. So you figured it was only a matter of time before they'd start moving some people. Kanachka back to green. Can he get to the right? Brown had him in his grasp and let him go. But it's only a gain of one. Good pursuit from Brian Victor. It's got to string him out. That's what you want out of your D-line. Get in there, be disruptive, wait for the friends to come jump on the pile. Third down and three. You know, one thing you'll notice with the Westminster offense thus far is a lot of third downs. They're not really picking up a whole lot on first and second down. It seems like every single every single time they get down to third and three, third and four. So, been able to convert so far. This is obviously by far their best drive of the night. Will not be will not be worth it though unless they hit Pater. Eight plays for 46 yards. Konechka to his left. Bobbled and incomplete. Bryce Hill had it in his grasp, but as he turned around, he couldn't protect it. It's the fundamentals, fundamentals of the game. Blocking, tackling, catching, stuff like that, and Westminster finding himself in fourth down. You know, Coach Debs talked talked briefly in his in his pregame interview about the quality of their special teams. They have solid kicker, and it looks like this is going to be our first first view of the night at the kicking game for Westminster, and this is big. Going into halftime, there's a big, big difference between 7-0 and 7-3 just from a you know, psychological standpoint. Getting shut out in the first half is not what you're looking for. So Tanner Dudick here from 32 yards. It's on the way. He's got a decent leg, but he misses it wide right. He was 3-for-3 three three on the season and 27-for-27 27 27 with extra points in his career. But he misses for the first time as a collegiate kicker. Not a long field goal, but he... Pushed it out to the right. That's a big miss. Case keeps Westminster off the board. 2.06 here left on the clock. Definitely plenty of time for Coach Deblack and his offense to, to march down the field. One time out, but, you know, and this is where you might see some more of the rollouts that Saxon has been using throughout the day. Westminster's probably going to be looking to protect the sideline, try and keep things in front of them, keep them in the middle and tackle them in bounds. That's got to be pretty deflating on the far side and that sideline as they wanted to throw one up toward Morgan and say incomplete. The argument there was that the ball was uncatchable, I would think, but pretty clear cut that Morgan got tripped up. Yeah, it's a tough call. It's a tough spot for the ref. Sometimes you get that incidental contact. You're not, not necessarily going to throw a flag on a guy for you know, just getting their feet tangled up, but obviously Case Western disagrees. Second down and 10, 201 left on the clock. Still time to try and make something happen. Spartans by a touchdown and came on the opening drive of the game. Saxton hesitated and he throws an incompletion. Oh, that's going to haunt the Titans. Holy smokes. Dangerous. Paul Gonzalez had it and couldn't pull it in. You see a double clutch there by Saxton and kind of threw off the timing of the route. Would have set up Westminster inside the 30 with a strong chance to score. Now this kind of puts Coach Debelak in an interesting spot. If you don't pick this up, you're punting the ball away, giving it back to Westminster. They have all three of their timeouts left and would definitely be in business as far as, as, far as getting on the board goes. Paul Gonzalez, a senior from Miami, Florida, the real heartbeat of the defense. Almost made a big play. Third and ten. Saxton. Finds Morgan, but it's not enough for a first down. 
Kevin Brown made sure to stop him well short of the stakes. And Westminster calls timeout. Timeout. Westminster, first charge timeout. Yeah, Coach Scott Benzel right there immediately after the tackle, getting in the referee's ear, calling the timeout. So they're going to be in business here. They're going to have two timeouts, minute 46 left, uh, minus whatever it's going to take to get this punt off. But like I was saying earlier, anything that you can do to get at least some points on the board going into halftime would be an enormous confidence boost. Well, there's not a, uh, not a great series history between these two teams, but this has easily been the most competitive game that we've seen in series history. It seems like every year Westminster usually comes in strong record, strong team, and they just have not been able to get over the hump with Case Western. But, I mean, if you ask either coach, 7 nothing's probably not the amount of points that they expected going into this, but it's definitely been the tight, you know, competitive game that everybody, everybody knew it was going to be. Danny Dennison back deep on a night where wind is not much of a factor. I mean, there's a, a comfortable soft breeze, but nothing crazy. All right, Spartans ready to go. They've got Albrecht back, standing at his own 11. Got to be careful to take care of special teams plays. Albrecht sends a low punt that wobbles out of bounds of the 44. That's pretty good field position for Westminster with a buck 39 and two timeouts in their pocket. The question is, can they find a way to hold up offensively? This line has played well so far tonight, but they've got to find a way to let some plays develop down the field. Yeah, I would say, at least on this drive, just for a conservative estimate, probably going to have to get down to the 20, 25-yard line. We saw earlier with, you know, the leg strength was there, just not on, not able to get on target. So probably playing for a field goal here. They will definitely take a touchdown if they can get it. I will say first two plays here are really going to set the tone for this whole drive. Konechka, complete. First down, good catch on the near side. Stepping out of bounds right after he got it, Dwayne Brown. And Dwayne Brown, probably the biggest the biggest member of the receiving core, like we said, converted cornerback, solid route there, and that's exactly what you want if you're the quarterback. Outbreaking route, catches it two feet in, out of bounds immediately, wastes no time. Brown and Cox both near side here. First and ten for the Titans. Brown, that's Cam Brown in the backfield. That's his sixth career forced fumble. Oh, he's an animal. Spartans take it over. Josh Smith scooping it up, picking up the yardage, and now completely flipping around. Case Western in the position to get more points on the board, all because of that man, Cam Brown. We told you all night he's going to show up. You just don't know when. And that's the difficulty. You can block him every single play for a quarter and a half, three quarters. He's going to make an impact by getting the strip sack like he did there, and he's probably not done. So it completely changes everything. Cam Brown stepping up having his offenses back and putting them in position to, to get more points here. How about Josh Smith being Johnny on the spot too? That was unbelievable. You said the first two plays were going to make a difference. First one looked pretty good. <laughs> Second one gave it back to him. Well done by the Spartan defense. First and ten. Saxton, pocket collapsed. He's got a ton of space. Runs for a gain of seven. Westminster bringing the safety pressure. Bringing the blitz from depth there, Saxton able to kind of sneak out to the right. Not necessarily a guy that looks to run all the time, but when he does have open space like that, he's more than capable of doing so. Carney's in the backfield here providing some protection. This ball thrown left side, Jacob Berg. I don't think he's got enough for the first down. You know what, beg your pardon, that's not Berg, it's uh, Robina. He's a little shaken up, he's a little slow. He doesn't want to come out, but he'll come off the field. Trey Minnick checks in. The clock is rolling 40 seconds, so no time to waste here. Carney on a draw play. He got smoked. Garrett Bishop, the Mike linebacker, breaks the play up. That's a huge play for the Westminster defense. Timeout. Case Western, third, final time out of the half. Penetration is the name of the game with, as far as defense goes, and Carney had just no chance there as soon as he got the ball, defenders in his face. We'll take a quick timeout. Come on back for the fourth down play next.
Fourth and four with 25 seconds left in the first half. Gorgeous night in Cleveland. Do the Spartans have enough? Try and pick up a, a fourth down conversion. Again, we've seen so much of this game played between the 25s. And oftentimes it's just too long for field goal tries. Spartans feel fairly comfortable inside 40 for Roberts and Albrecht. But of course, this is well outside that range. Fourth down and four. Case just burned their final timeout. Drew Saxton waiting. Play clock's at eight. Drew looking left side. He's got Colt Morgan. First down, out of bounds. And a thumbs up from Greg Debelak. That's there all night. It's any pretty much any time that, that Saxon wants to take that little, you know, three, four outcutting route, it's going to be there, especially with Colt Morgan. And the fear with Colt, because he's such a you know reliable deep threat and he's really strong in the deep ball, is you're gonna you gotta give up something with him just because he's so versatile. So Westminster, you know, they're gonna give up that little out route. Carney standing behind Saxton, now goes to his left. Clock obviously stopped with Morgan going out of bounds. Good protection. Saxton can get through the defense, and he's out of bounds inside the 15. There it is, showing off the wheels. You know, I've been pretty impressed with Brett Carney in pass protection, too. Offensive line is, you know, they've picked it up here in the second quarter as far as pass pro goes. And don't look now, Spartans marching down through the red zone. And they have to feel like they've dominated the game so far. I, I think we would agree that they've been the better team at this point. Only 7 nothing on the scoreboard, though. So if they can get even three points, make it a two-score game, that's going to be a huge, huge confidence boost going into the second half. Uh, I tend to agree they've been the better team, but I don't think that's a massive margin. I mean, Westminster's played really well. They had a tough opening drive defensively. And remember, Westminster gets the ball to start the second half here. The Titans have essentially said, look, with 13 seconds left, not worried about trying to get the ball back on their own. They want to make sure they get the right defense called here as some uh, nervous Spartan fans look on. Well, I'm not going to ask you to play offensive coordinator, but if you're the Spartans, obviously this is Colt Morgan territory if you're going to throw fades in the end zone. You said earlier in the, in the game you didn't think it would be the only time you'd see that play. Yeah, well, and it's, it's a tough spot. You can pretty much cross off anything over the middle. Just because Spartans no timeouts, sure, if they're no going to time. be if they're going to be tackled in bounds, it's you're going to see a you know a fire drill out there. But I would think one of these plays here in the next 13 seconds will just be kind of a toss up to Morgan, and they can run it. So you see, he's in the slot now. You can run the slot fade. It's not necessarily just to the outside guy, but fade's going to take about three four seconds. Um, so it should be coming at some point. Woody's wide left. They fake right. Throw it to Morgan. Oh, he couldn't hang on. Love the way he located the ball, but just a little too tough. The old Willie Mays catch. There it is, that slot fade. Two hands on it, just kind of an awkward position. If he had to do it again, maybe able to turn around just in a little different way. And I mean, it was right there, but like I said, he's he's a threat anytime he's you know running deep like that, and Saxon knows it, so. See if the Westminster defense can step up here. Second down. Not sure they'll be able to get all the way to fourth down. Only nine seconds left. They can get a first down here without scoring as well. Saxton. Time to throw. Gets rid of it left side. The Spartans cannot get out of bounds. They're going to try to get to the line, but that's it. Boy, Westminster defensively figured it out. Great close to the second quarter for the Titans. They got a little lucky dodging a bullet. And uh, Cor uh, Colt Morgan did not catch a ball that was potentially catchable. It was certainly a tough play. And then, of course, as things finished off, they uh, couldn't quite get in the end zone. So a good first half. Case Western Reserve at times looked like they could move the ball really well. But uh, Westminster defensively, some pretty impressive numbers.